Hey, all Andy here, helping you build a career you love. Tricky questions and interview situations today. Always trying to make it fun for you because I know job searching stinks and job interviewing is awful. So get in the chat, say hi, put some question marks in front of your questions today. Rifle up some really tricky questions and situations that you get. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through six I've selected. I'm going to share those with you. And then when we go into the Q&A, we'll start taking some of those questions right off the top. Give Kara a big shout out. None, none of this happens without her. And I want to thank you for your attention. I know how much competition there is for everything in your life. Not just other career coaches, but just husbands and wives and partners and kids and dogs and cats and whatever else goes on in your life. I appreciate you spending some of it with me, whether you're here with me live or watching on the recording. Okay. Why did I want to talk about tricky situations today? Many of you know that I have online training and coaching programs. I talk about job searching and career development stuff. I have coaching individuals as part of that service. I have coaching as groups as part of that service. And every week I talk to, well, in the, in the past, I don't know, five months or six months, it's been about 15 to 20 people a week. It's Wednesday morning. I've already talked to eight people. I've got two more right after this session. So I'm getting a lot of one-to-one -one contact uh, situations about what's happening out there, what issues people are facing. And when I start to hear things repeat, I think, okay, I got to bring it to my, to my weekly live show. So I'm going to run through six in, I don't want to say any particular order other than I think maybe the fun factor. And so let's roll through these. And like I said, and we'll answer more in the Q and A. All right. Number one, I've been getting this one quite a bit. And this is, this is not a new issue that people face. I've just been been hearing it more and more lately. And people are saying to me, Andy, uh, I got in this interview, whether that's with a, a recruiter for a screen or whether it's a hiring official, and they don't stop talking, okay? So here you are in an interview, all gussied up, whether that's physically or mentally, thinking about all those things you want to say and stories you want to tell and what questions they might ask you, and they're not really asking you questions. Who has this happened to, right? Do you ever get in this situation, and then what do you do? You start to panic because you think, I need to sell myself. I need to sell myself. And we have kind of this running joke in the recruitment industry, and recruiters, I think, will get this. Uh, we, we always say, Whoever talked more in the interview thinks it went better. Okay, I kid you not. That's what we think. We kind of joke about it. And, 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 it's, and it's true in many cases. But lots of times, uh, a recruiter is trying to sell you on the opportunity. Or a hiring official really likes your background and they want to go into sell mode. Let them. Let them. It's, 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 it's okay. So who's, who's saying it's happened to you? Wendy Moy, great to see you. I... I uh, I, I see I see that you're saying it's happened to you, Fanny. Maybe that's maybe you're just telling me it's Fanny, or maybe that's happened to you. AG happened yesterday. Okay, so this happens quite a bit. And so I don't want you to panic. Just let them let them talk. And there's two things you absolutely need to do when they're talking a lot. First, pay attention to what they're saying. What is it that they think is great about their organization? They might be telling you about their goals and their problems, right? We're trying to achieve this. We're having these challenges. Awesome intel for you. They might be talking to you about how much fun they think the culture is and, and the camaraderie and the Friday afternoon, four o'clock happy hours and, and games and other things like that. Just take it in because then you know things that they think are important or they'd like to advertise. You can figure out a way, whether in that interview or in subsequent interviews, to talk to them about it or use that information to your advantage. And if you're concerned, which I know all you are, about selling yourself, all you need to do is at some point when they catch their breath, say to them, Wow, thank you so much for all that information. I, I appreciate you you sharing it with me. Uh, sounds fantastic. You know, I'm even more excited based on on this stuff I'm hearing. But I want I want to make sure that you're also getting what you need from me in order to make a good decision about hiring me and whether I'm a good fit. Is there anything in particular based on either anything you've shared already or any part of my background that you'd like to talk about or get to at some point? And just sort of just open it up. 
and and let them know that you obviously want to share you with them. And 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 my point to all of this is take it in stride. Take it in stride. Don't you be worried about you know, interjecting, interrupting, take the data that they're giving you, take the insight that they're giving you. What is it that they're talking about and make sure you're capturing it. All right. They're talking and you can't seem to get them to stop. Just politely interject. All right. That's the first one. Next one is, and this happens a lot in, uh, when you're, t it happens more often than you would think, or maybe I should say it's not so uncommon, where you get in a situation, this, this has a higher probability of happening if you're talking to someone of the senior level, whether you are senior or whether you are junior talking to somebody who's senior, and they open up the interview with, what questions do you have for me? Okay, so this is a, a very... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's, I, I don't want to say it's an extremely common situation, but it's a lot more common than you would think. And it happens for a couple of reasons. And we, as executive recruiters, we had some, we had some CEOs and senior vice presidents and executive vice presidents and senior level directors that would do this, where they would say, Andy, I'm going to ask them if they have any questions. And if they run out, we're going to end the interview because you should never, ever run out of questions. That was, that was some of them. Others felt, no, it's my job to close them. If I'm talking to somebody, especially a junior or mid-level, who's made it through the interviews and they're coming to me at the end, I don't need to spend a lot of time trying to evaluate them. That's what I hired those smart people to do, those, the person that this individual is going to be reporting to, the hiring official or the management team they're going to be working with. I expect all of them to do that. And I expect the teammates to screen them technically and all that good stuff and the HR people to know whether they're a good cultural fit. I'm here to close them, to sell them on the opportunity. So some people are doing it I don't want to say with a malicious factor to try to screen you out. Most people are doing it to draw you in. That would be that would be you know my observation of the people that I have interacted with as an executive recruiter and even myself as a hirer. So if they, the important thing is if they say, "What questions do you have for me?" You need an hour's worth of questions. Now, those of you that go to the Andy School of Boot Camping or Andy School of Interview Intervention Training Program, you know you're going to be ready because we talk about how to identify all those questions, how to always have more than you need, but especially having the ones that are most vital to you to understand, is this a good company and is this a good company for me? We, 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 we put those criteria matrices in front of your face with 80 some odd lines. So you know you're going to have tons of questions to everybody else. Make sure you have all of your questions when you go into an interview. And yes, I would like you to prioritize it according to who you're interviewing with, but I want you to have all of your questions at your disposal. Okay, so this is an important... Who has this happened to? Who has this happened to where you get in and it's, hey, what questions do you have for me? That's kind of a... That's kind of a common one. It really is, especially if you're a junior person talking to a more senior person. Okay, so that's another another great one. All right, let's take a let's take a little bit of a turn here. Let's talk about some of the stomach inducing questions that I think that I think people get. Stephanie Delaney, it's happened to you. That doesn't surprise me. Carol, yes, last week. Right. See, that was the only that was the only question I had for the hiring official asked me. Yes. Running, rabbit, four, Pamela Green, yes. Wendy Moore, yes. Okay. Jim Abrahams. So it happens a lot. So everybody be ready for that. Okay. Now, we get these funky questions, and I'm going to just give you two samples, but it's a whole genre of questions that's very negative, and it's very about you. So whenever, I want you to think for a second, everybody just kind of pause, soak in what I'm about to tell you. Anytime you get a question that's a negative about you, I want you to answer it with an omission about them. I want you to make it about them, not you. And let's 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 break this down. What's what are a couple of the questions and and what do I mean by this? Has anybody been asked this one? Why should we not hire you? Has anybody been asked this question? Why should we not hire you? Isn't this kind of a jerky question? 
show of hands. Anybody been asked this? Why should we not hire you? And so what I mean by it's okay. So now you've got a negative question about you, right? And what's your natural inclination after you panic? Right, I have to tell them something that they may not like about me and might be a reason why they wouldn't hire me. Why should we not hire you? Okay, why does this have to be about you? Can it be about them? Right, so what I want you to do when you get a question like this is to answer in the omission about them. So what does that look like? Oh, yeah, if, if, if you put me on a team of knuckleheads who are not team players and don't have each other's back, you may, may as well not hire me. It's an if this condition is true about you, then do me the favor and don't hire me. Okay? You, 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 get, you get what I'm saying here. If, yeah, if I discover that you are not customer service oriented throughout this interviewing process, that's a reason not to hire me because I'm not going to be happy because I'm a super duper customer centric, super focused, customer serving, servant leadering type of person. So you take a negative question about you, you make it an omission about them, and in turn, you make it a positive about yourself, meaning I am a team player. I am customer service focused. Do you guys get this? It's an omission, meaning you don't say anything bad about them. You're saying, if this is absent from you, then don't hire me because I'm that. I'm so dedicated to my customers. It's so important to me that we put out a great product. It's so important to me that I, I serve my teammates and, and I have their backs and they have mine. I want to be part of that. Now, you're not saying that they don't have it. You're just telling them you don't want to be hired if that condition is true, okay? Automatic, like you know, when you go in the doctor's office and they pack you, on, they pop you on the knee. I know some of you doctors out there know what this is called. I don't, but I know my foot goes up like that. Automatic, it's automatic. What's another one? What's another one? How about this one? Why would you not work here? Same question. It's the same question. Literally, these are the same. These are the same question. I'm too short anyway. These are the same question. Why would you not work here? I would not work there if I found you were not customer service focused, that your product was not solid, that you did not have an interest in figuring out how to gain more market. Pick anything you want. Make it an omission about them, which in turn, right, you are inferring, or sorry, you are implying, they are inferring that that that's a positive about you. They will infer it's a positive about you. That's how I am. You're describing a quality trait about you that's missing from them, right? Why would you not work here? If you did anything illegal, well, that's, that's more of an action, but you get the idea. So these kind of questions where they're pinning you in do not need to be answered about you. They could be answered about them, okay? Who, who's gotten this question before? This is, a, this is a sticky, these are sticky, right? And then you panic. So just immediately go to the omission about them, which in turn becomes a positive about you. Okay, now I saved my two favorite for the end. Now, sometimes you get into situations where situations, literally, you haven't, you're being asked about to solve a situation, a real life situation that you have never encountered before. Okay, I chose those words very carefully. I'm talking about, you know how to do stuff. You just haven't had this situation to handle. Okay, so let me, let me give you let me give you what I'm talking about. You don't have experience with the situation, all right? This is, this is not, hey, do you have C++ coding experience? No, I do not have that experience. That's a skill set, uh, and it's not on my resume, so why would you think I have it kind of thing? Maybe you're just poking around. I'm talking about you are interviewing with somebody for a position you are wholly qualified to handle, except they throw something at you that you've never done before. Okay, let me give you an example. These last two are the same person. Her name's Lisa. She's super fabulous. I've been working with her a lot lately, and she's like way deep into an interviewing process with a, with a PR firm. And she and I were, were talking, and we were doing a coaching session for her last kind of a last session to paint the scenario. She was going to go have a lunch meeting, so a little bit more casual. It's like her second or third 
interaction with the hiring official who's the chief people officer. Lisa's in HR. She's got a background in, 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 in as a HR business partner. And there's a lot that goes along with the action, the strategic HR elements that move a company forward as far as employee development, organizational structure, employee happiness, the programs that are run, and things of that nature. This is not somebody who's working on payroll and benefits and things like that, but somebody who is aligned to the organization. So the, she said to me, Andy, that, well, the chief people officer told me that this parent company has a number of subsidiaries or child uh, organizations and now that co the COVID pandemic is over, essentially uh, people are returning to the office and 90% of their workforce is back into the office, but they have about a 10% personnel problem with people who are digging their heels in and don't want to go back to work. So this is an, an L, uh, um, uh, basically a situation that I'm going to be I'm going to be asked about how would I handle it. And so she says, I've I've never done this. And I said, well, sure, not a lot of people haven't done this because we just haven't been faced with this kind of scenario. This is something that's very new, right? I'm, I'm going to be 58 this year. I mean, I've never seen this in my lifetime, right? So we're, we're all dealing with some issues that are new, but maybe you're dealing with something that, while not new, is just something you've never handled. Whenever you get into this situation, okay, meaning I, I'm, being in, I'm given a situation that, that I've never done before, you make an analogy about something that's exactly like that, and then you tell the solution to how you would solve the analogy. Let me be really specific. So in this situation with Lisa, I said to her, okay, what you need to do is draw a parallel that the this chief people officer will immediately understand about something you've solved over and over and over again, and you make this situation look like just like any of those situations. So if I was faced with the situation and, and she was to ask me, I'd say, oh, if you've got 10% of your, of your people who don't want to do something, that's a cultural problem. And much like any cultural problem, effectively, how do you solve a cultural problem, right? You need, you need to change the culture so that they want to get back to the office. This just happens to be about wanting to return to the office, but it could be about anything. And you handle that the same way a cowboy manages the herd, right? It only takes 10 cowboys to manage a 3,000 herd, herd, uh, herd of cattle. It's true, right? And it's, it's not because it takes 10 cowboys to each manage 300 uh, cows. No, the 10 cowboys manage the 10, the lead cows, the lead pack. The lead pack manages the other 2,990 cows, right? So when we have a cultural problem, there's a number of different ways to solve it. You could, for example, put an advisory board together of representative people who are influential at, you know, just pick a couple people at each level in the organizations throughout the U.S. or internationally or wherever it is, make them an advisory board, put this issue in along with all the other issues that they're going to, you know, would speak on behalf of the others for. You want to pick influential people, you give them an incentive and so on. Bang, bang, problem solved. So you don't try, you don't try to move the 10% all at once and, and you don't try to hit them over the head with a stick. That's not going to work. It's just going to make them dig their heels in more. But what you need, what you need, is others pulling them toward the culture you want. You do any cultural shift like this. So the minute you draw the analogy, she understands what it is, you're, where you're going with this. It immediately registers with her, and she starts running through, meaning the hiring official starts running through scenarios where she's had cultural issues before, and immediately she's starting to run through her history and how it was solved, the mistakes that they made, and how much what Lisa is saying makes sense. Okay, So whenever you get in a situation... Like this, you need to draw a parallel. What else is it like? How did you solve that? I've had to solve 10 different cultural issues from this, this, and this to this, this, and this. And you rattle off other examples. You're not going to tell 10 stories, but you're going to make one analogy and you're going to run through it. Right? Has anybody been faced with this kind of scenario where you were given a situation where you just didn't, you just hadn't done that before? Well, Lisa had has seen she's been working in HR for 30 years or however long it's been she's seen a lot of stuff just hasn't seen this yet but but knows how to solve problems like this okay and then here's another one that I absolutely love to kind of cap off the six 
Have you ever been in a situation where you weren't sure which story is best? So let me give you an example. Same, same person, Lisa, same coaching session. She says, Andy, they, they mentioned to me they're having an issue, a uh, communication issue. Also, maybe some disgruntled employees because they're changing their annual review cycles and number of times that they will give people reviews and pay raises from three times a year to two times a year and people are up in arms. So I said to her, okay, when you look at this scenario and she, have you done this before? She said, for the, at the last three companies I was at, I, I had to deal with this where we went from like three times a year to two or we went from two to one or we went from four to two or something like this. And, and, and I, so I've seen it three t- like recently in the last three companies. I said, okay, in situations like this, she says, so, so her question was, which story do I tell? And I said, okay, don't, don't even think about it that way. You don't always have to blurt out the story right away. Never miss an opportunity to sell yourself. And the way you do that in a situation like this, where you have multiple options of stories to tell, is you forward stuff what you're going to say with experience and a question. So here's what I mean by that. So instead of just saying to the chief people officer, well, I would likely do this. We don't want you to, and you know, I had this issue at this company and here's how I would do that. What, what's the rush? Say, because, and you got to keep in mind too, this happened to be a, a lunch session, a lunch get together, but I would do this even in the boardroom. It, I would say to her, you know, uh, first thing is when you really think about what you just, the issue you're facing, you're going from three times a year to two times a year. If you really think about that, you're basically going from four, every four months to every six months. I don't think anybody's going to be really up in arms solely about the fact that they've got to wait eight more weeks for their pay raise. It's just not that big a deal in the overall scheme of things. My guess is this is probably just a symptom of something else. They're just feeling unappreciated. And then you want to start looking at what are all the other things that are either being taken away from them or whatever. But wait, that's for another That's for another discussion. You asked me how I would approach this. You know, I actually did this at my last three companies. So I have had three recent ro- goes of this. All right, now you just stacked up. I have experience. I've done this X times. All right, that's 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 point one. You start racking up some points. Then you want to go to give a multiple choice of what's well, what are the solutions? So I've done this three times in the last 10 years. It's either this, 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 or this. These are the issues that I solved with all three of those. This is what the real problems were. Okay, now you've just given her multiple choice. Which do you do you think any of those are what you're faced with? Because you know your company and I don't, right? Yet I am not working there. So now what you did is you just said, not only have I done it three times, I know what all the issues are and I know how to solve them. Okay. Now you ask the chief people officer, because if if you let me know what you think, I can tell you which which solution I used to solve that problem. Let Just ask the questions. It only takes a few seconds. And you, st- you scored major points by telling her, I've done this over and over and over. I know what to look for. It's this, 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 or this. And then you, and then you let her pick your story for you, and then you tell the story. Well, in that case, and then you roll into the story. So you don't have to... You don't have to fly blind. If you have options, open it up with something. Many of you are going to be in interviews that are very conversational. There's nothing wrong with you saying that. I've done that three times. You're asking for my opinion. I've done it several times. I've had I've solutioned it differently each time, or or maybe it was a combination of solutions, but effectively, you're going to address it based on what the issue is. Right. How many times for those of you that really follow me, have you heard me say, you know, the units that you join have the same goals across companies. The issue is the problems that that those companies have are what make it unique. Right. Every marketing department, as an example, wants better brand awareness through more leads at a cheaper cost and a higher conversion rate. Every company in the world wants that. But each company might have a different problem. Every company in the world wants what? Happy, engaged employees that are thrilled with what they're getting paid, are enthusiastic, and so on. Everybody wants that. 
right? The, the problems in attaining that are, well, so vast when it comes to, to satiating personnel. But you get the point. If you don't know what story is best, front stuff your experience, flex your muscles before you choose a story. Because even if you don't tell the other two or three stories or whatever it is, they still know that you've done it that many times. Okay, so, so this is another one. So just to kind of recap these, if they don't want to stop talking, let them talk. Just sort of politely interject, you know, what would you like to know about me to know if I'm a good fit? Questions for me. You make sure you have enough. Okay, always bring them in. Why should we not hire you and why would you not work here? Okay, any of the negatives, you make it an omission about them, which in turn turns it into a positive about you. If you don't have experience with the situation, you make an analogous situation and you talk about the solution to that. And if you don't know which story to tell, you front load it with flex those muscles, right? I'm so experienced. I've done it 20 times. It's these, these are the problems. And then I can tell you what the solutions are. Tell me which one you want to hear about kind of thing. Okay. So those are, those are kind of a half a dozen good ones that I absolutely wanted to bring with you. I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoyed that, it, whether you're here with me live or watching this on the recording, click the thumbs up button. Please share this. People need help. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel where I put new videos out every Tuesday morning and I show up live every Thursday, except when I'm here on Wednesday, like today, because we have a conflict tomorrow because I, I still need my time with you. Thanks for coming. Those of you watching on the replay, I'll see you next week. If you're here with me live, we're going to the chat.